Hi guys, we are back at Smash Fishing. We are in the one man dinghy, heading out to the boat and we're gonna go target some different bream species. Primary target today is gonna be black bream and I'm gonna try and catch them on some prawns. I went to the shop and got myself just some supermarket prawns. I know they work for a lot of species. I wanna see if they work for the bream and hopefully we can get some pot bait and something to eat. We might be meeting in glorious fishing out there, so stay tuned, baby. It's smash fishing. Woo! The tackle I'm using today, guys, I've got my little two-foot kayak rod. All I did is glue a, uh, another rod section on so I could put it underneath my armpit. And this thing, it bends like hell, but as now I've got some poke. So what we're basically using, as I hook myself, beautiful pull that out lovely job <laughs> I've got some mackerel feathers and I'm going to try and bait them up with the uh, with the prawns if that don't work then I'll probably switch to a one up one down rig or some sort of flapper rig we'll just see how we go from there so we get the engine down we got a little bit to go yet we want that tide to rise so I can drop the engine fully and we're on a merry way baby if you're on a boat I highly recommend wearing a life jacket I don't wear one when I'm rowing out here I should do really but um I like to keep my life jacket on the boat so I don't forget it because the last thing I want to do is go out and then not have a life jacket. I've got a couple of spares on board but this is my favourite, this is my lucky one. So yeah, life jacket is always essential. On the boat I have a lot of safety gear. We've got our registered VHF radio. This is all in case of emergency, that's the only reason I will use this. And also underneath here I've got a small pack of flares, I've got fire extinguishers and then we've got my anchor is very accessible so if i ever came into any sort of hardship where the engine dies all i gotta do is open the window throw the anchor out and then we're stuck in one place and we're in less danger we have set sail it is absolutely mirror calm i can't wait to get out there what a beautiful day i'm just gonna wait to get out of the bay and we're gonna be zipping up there man oh, i can't wait Here comes Inglorious. We come around this corner in a minute, guys. <laughs> Here he goes. Inglorious fishing. <laughs> oi, oi. There he is, the legend. We're going to head out fishing, baby. Oi, oi. How's it going? Let's go catch some fish, my boy! Yeah, I'm <laughs> We're at the location now, guys. Just setting up mackerel feathers. Really simple. I've got the ones on with the little uh, little jigs. I'm gonna load them up full of prawns, and hopefully, we start hooking into some fish. It's nice to get out with Inglorious. Shout out to that boy. Got some lovely fresh prawns here, guys. Good for humans, good for the fish. All I'm doing is just threading them on the best I can. There you go, shot full prawns on the vest. We've got Inglorious just next to us as well. You can see him there. Glorious fishing, baby! Yeah, boy! <laughs> oh, this is nice. We've got some company for us. Fish on, guys. Hey, on the prawns! <laughs> I've just stolen Mr. Inglorious's bream spot. <laughs> Look at the bend. This is quite a heavy set rod as well. Tell it's a bream by the jaggedy bites. Oh, she's a clunker as well. Lovely big fish. That's more the stamp we wanted, guys. About a pound, pound and a half. Perfect size bream. I've just swapped over to my little mini rod, just for a bit of fun. I was using a 30 pound class rod and it's it's not much fun, you could just winch them up. So I'd rather have a little bit of a fight. That's what it's all about. Put these pawns on. The good thing is, two, for two pound, you get, you get a serious amount of baits out of these. We're going to be using these a little bit more often, that's for sure. Fish on, on the mini rod. It feels very small. 
<laughs> you get a big fish on this one, you soon know about it. Come on! Tiny dinky thing, look at the size of that. It's definitely not the ones we want. Feels like a little bit better one. <laughs> look at the bend. Ah. <laughs> oh, great fun this. It's a little bit of sport, playing around. Lovely day, we've got force two wins today. Absolutely beautiful it is. Well, it's a little bit bigger. They're not the stamp we want. Like I said, they're not over a pound and a half. I'm not going to keep them. Like that. Certainly biting. Is he on? Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it that time. Oh, yeah. Look at that band. Oh, yeah. That's a better one. <laughs> This is a lot better breed. This could be a keeper if there's one on the hook, that's for sure. You gotta be careful with these little sabiki rigs because you can pull the hook out the mouth. But this rod, it's amazing how much strain it can really take. Let's see what we've got there. And this is all on the shop wall prawns. Just shows how well they really work. Oh yeah, that's a lovely breed. There's two rigs. right here. Don't know if you can see the colours on its head there. It's in breeding colours. Usually the males have got the bright vibrant blues on them. Such a gorgeous fish. How are you getting on? Oh, one decent one, about a pound, pound and a half maybe. A lot of small stuff, eh? Yeah. Got two rods out. Which one's gonna go? fish are certainly around what I'm doing with my bream guys the ones I'm gonna keep I've been keeping in a bucket of water nice and fresh and then I'll keep the biggest ones of the day and let the others go beautiful because what I'm gonna do is fillet them eat the fillets and then keep the frames from my crab pots Dan was nice enough to give us half a giant cuttlefish here so I'm gonna be cutting really nice thin strips of this because this stuff stays on the hook for ages so fingers crossed we can get a few decent ones Seems to be a lot of little green here, a lot of tiny little taps. Hopefully the big ones will switch on soon. Oh, we're both in, look at that. There's some weight here, I think there's a few fish. <laughs> we're literally about six foot away. <laughs> oh, I'll just push you away. Oh, that's better. That's the ones we want. That's a little bit better that one. Definitely not a keeper though. Wouldn't mind one a little bit bigger. We need to try and get through all these little baby ones to get those big ones. Because round here, there is absolute chunks. It's more like the stamp we want guys. Perfect eating size green that. That size and above is exactly what we want. All right, We've got a fish on this one I think. Yep. All right. Fish has certainly switched on now. Great bit of sport. Need to come here with an LRF rod, that'd be amazing. Oh, is he off? I think he's off. Oh no, he's still there. It's got a bit small. Could have a better fish on here, guys. This one's given a lot more of a fight. Come on, on the mini rod. Look at the bend. <laughs> Let's go. 
Love this. This is the first day of landing fish on the boat, especially fish to eat as well. That's a better one. That's the biggest one of the day right there. That's a lovely bream. There you go. Lovely sized bream, that one. It's in glorious in all of his beauty. Look at that. He's hooking up all the big bream, leaving me the small stuff. Uh, <laughs> what a cracking vessel. I love the Alaskas. How big is she? Come on. Oh, that's another not bad one, that. I'm going to let that one go. It's borderline. The thing with bream, you want to have decent one just for the meat. You want nice thick fillets on it, you know? So the bigger the better, really. If you catch a four pounder, then happy days. <laughs> Caught me a fish. Fish on, baby. Fish on, baby. Pandemonium on the vessel. This feels fish heavier. Fish. This feels heavier. I hope it's a keeper. <laughs> what we got? We've either got a couple of fish or a big one. And it's a decent one. It's a bit better stamp. Lovely. But that's not big enough for what I want. Come on. I could do this all day long. It's so fun. Just dropping down with the feathers, a little bit of bait, catching some nice fish. Good thing with the bream is they fight so hard. Oh, that's not a bad one. That's a better fish. That's a better stamp for sure. That's a keeper, that's for sure. Not a bad bream at all, that one. Not a clonker, but she's edible. Inglorious has just headed off now, guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head to a place called the Braze where hopefully there's a few mackerel. I had four up there the other day. Hopefully there's a few more. I was thinking a little bit of different content, but if not, we've got loads of, we've got loads of bream here. And that's the biggest one of the day that Inglorious caught. He gave it to me because I'm going to eat them. Yeah, happy days. So we'll head up there now and hopefully we'll find some mackerel. So there you go, guys. That's the best of the catch today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fillet these in a minute, keep the carcasses on the boat, or even I might even just gut them because I might whole roast this fish in the oven. So yeah, I'll see what I can do. I'm going to get these gutted and I'll see you in the kitchen. Back in the kitchen now, guys. Got a lovely fresh bream here. You can see the vibrant blues on it, still coming out. You can always tell a fresh fish by the eye. If it turns white, it's a bit old. If it's pure black, nice and shiny like that, nice and fresh. So what I'm doing with this fish guys, got a few different seasonings, I've got a bit of black pepper, get that straight over the top, nice bit of sea salt, well, I've got some garlic puree here and this is going to go inside the fish as well as on top and all of this is just going to steam through with all the juices. Got some nice bits of Guernsey butter straight over the top on the inside as well. It's important not to miss the inside. Beautiful. And what we got is a few pieces of lemon to go over the top just to give it that citrusy taste. Get some pieces inside. And last of all, the good old sweet chili sauce. We're just going to glove that straight over the top. It's going to give it a little bit of spice and that little bit of extra flavour. It's a beautiful bit of bream. All the flavours in there are all going to mingle. It's going to be absolutely delicious, baby. Just 
Check that out guys. What a beautiful bit of fish this is. Bream is such a good fish to eat. Nice and firm meat. Look at that. That's how you know your fish is cooked. When it just flakes off the bone. Lovely white flesh there. Let's tuck into this bad boy. Oh yeah. Lovely fresh bit of bream at midnight. I'll be going out on the boat at six in the morning so I'm staying awake for the night feeds and I'm gonna enjoy this lovely bream. What I like about bream is it's not a really bony fish. It's got lovely, lovely big flakes on it. It's absolutely delicious. Mm. All those different flavors, they just melt through the flesh as you cook it. It's something else, just a whole cooked fish like this. So underrated. I would have brought Smash down to try a bit, but because this has got loads of garlic in it, dogs are obviously poisoned by garlic. So this one's all mine. It's such a delicate fish when you cook it like this. Because you've got all the butter there and the different ingredients, it definitely softens the fish, makes it really juicy. Oh, making my mouth water. Mm. Oh. And about this size bream, about the pound and a half sort of size. It's a great, that's a great sort of one person size fish. Even if you fillet it, the meat you get off is perfect for one person, I think. You can sit there and enjoy a whole fish by yourself, you're not wasting anything. Mmm. Okay. The whole fish bone. Ow! Okay. And when you peel the bone back guys, if you just go where the bottom flank of the fish is and just run the fork over the top, it will pull all the big bones out. All of these sort of rib bones, they are absolutely huge. So you're definitely not going to choke on anything. You'll notice it way before. And then from there, you can just start picking up huge chunks of fish. Whoa. Oh. Bream's got to be up there with one of my favourite fish, for sure. Just from how firm it stays, but how juicy it is as well. Mm. Big shout out to Inglorious for giving me this one. I kept the smaller ones for pot bait. I took a couple of fillets off them as well. I put them in the freezer. But yeah, Bream is something that's in huge abundance in the Channel Islands. We get absolutely loads of them. So instead of using wrath, a lot of fishermen tend to use bream for pot bait just because they are in huge numbers. And wrath being a very slow growing fish, we'd rather put them back, you know? But we do use them sometimes when we need to, but we'll always try and keep the population up. Mmm. That's something else. Mmm. I really like that sweet chili sauce. So I won't leave you any longer, guys. I'm gonna pop out soon. And then I'll fish in at 6 in the morning as well. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you ever get a bream, definitely worth cooking it like this. It's absolutely delicious. Maybe a little bit more spice. I can't really get a spicy kick from it. Just with the sweet chilli sauce. So maybe a few, um, jalape uh, a few jalapenos, as people mentioned in the last video. So stay tuned. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. It's smart fishing, baby. Mmm. Come on. Got him on the big rock. Gave a good account of himself at the start then. He was fighting like hell. Come on. <laughs> Fish up, baby! <laughs> there we go. Oh, he's foul hooked. I thought he was a decent fish, got a foul hooked little tiddler. <laughs> <laughs>